Joseph and Moses had Gentile brides, right? Before that, they were both rejected by their own, and then they have Gentile brides. But then what happens? They both save all of Israel during a time of great trouble. God has them both save all of Israel, and then he unites his Gentile family to his Israeli family as one family forever and ever. And this speaks of the exact same plan that Jesus has in the book of Revelation, and it's so exciting, you guys. And we're going to look at that in this episode. So here we go. Here's a, a wall painting in a place called Saqqara, Egypt. Many of the archaeologists and experts on this believe that this is where Joseph, in fact, was. And this is a wall painting, and they used a yellow pigment for Hebrew people. And what's interesting about this painting is you see that they're wearing new clothing, really beautiful clothing, as they come to this Egyptian official. These are two Egyptians here handing a document, official document, to this oversized official, which of many scholars believe that that was Joseph. And we're going to see that at the end of this episode, I promise. We're going to get more into it. But there's even more. So Saqqara had these huge grain silos right here that were like, some of them were 65 feet deep, and they found petrified grain in the bottom of these. And these holes were actually tubes that would connect all of these silos together, and it would the, these silos would hold massive, massive amounts of grain for times of famine. And here you see another picture, in that Saqqara area of these Egyptians going down with sacks of grain, and it's being fed out of those same holes in these silos. And like one person, they bring these sacks up. It's like one way in, one way out. And I believe this is where Joseph was. It's really interesting stuff, and it's awesome. We're going to look get into that too in this episode. But primarily, we're going to be looking at how you can understand the book of Revelation, the end times events, through the story of Joseph and through Moses. And it's super exciting. And by the way, my friend, if you have not subscribed to my channel, you might want to click that button down there and the bell too, and you're going to get everything. Right now, we're doing a series called Jesus in the Old Testament, how to find him in the Old Testament. And it's so exciting. We're still in Genesis. And the next episode is going to be, you guys, on Joseph. And I'm super excited about that. I hope you are too. And comment down below, even if you disagree. I love your comments, you guys. So let's get into this presentation right now. So Joseph, right? Moses and Jesus all have this common thread that runs through each story, and especially Joseph and Moses are showing us a huge picture of Jesus and his plan, him and the Father's plan and the Holy Spirit's plan. So here we see Joseph, Moses, and Jesus, and they all have these things in common. So number one, they all had miraculous births. Number two, they were rejected the first time, right? On their first visitation, as Stephen said, they were rejected. And number three, they all had Gentile brides, right? Primarily, right? And number four, there was a time of great trouble. And number five, that's when Israel is saved. We see this common thread going through each one of these stories. And it's so exciting, my friend. I can't wait as we get into this. Here we go. All right. So, miraculous births, right? Joseph, or Yosef, if you're in Israel, then God remembered Rachel, it said in the scripture. I believe it's uh, Genesis chapter 30. And God listened to her, and he opened her womb. That was a miracle. She was very old, Rachel, and she was barren. She couldn't have children. But God opened her womb miraculously, right? Just like with Mary, right? And she had Joseph or Yosef. Now Moses, remember this? The Pharaoh said, every son who is born, you are to throw. He was speaking about the Hebrew sons. You are to throw into the Nile. In other words, kill him. That's evil. Just like who? Herod. That speaks of the story where Herod the Great, not so great. He was Herod the, the Horrible, right? That's what I call him. He tried to kill Jesus because he found out these wise men came, these magi came, and they wanted to worship this king that was to be born, the king of Israel. And the scribes showed him where it's found that he would be born in Bethlehem. And that's where these guys were going. The star was above Bethlehem. And so Herod wanted to kill him. Like, no, I'm not going to share my throne with, with the Messiah. How dare he do that? 
And uh, so anyway, we see that in this story too, because we see it right here where Moses, right? Moses had this evil Pharaoh that wanted to kill all these Hebrew baby boys, but his sister Miriam, right? Miriam is the same name as Mary, by the way. It, that's where Mary derives from, watched over him. She took care of him as a baby, watched over him. She came up with a plan. It was awesome. So in Matthew chapter two, it's recorded that the angel says to Joseph, the the father, or not the father, but the stepfather of Jesus, who was married to Mary or Miriam, right? He says, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And he stayed there until the death of Herod. And this happened so that what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Who else was called out of Egypt? Joseph, and Moses, right? And Jesus. These were pictures of who? Of Jesus. And they were all in Egypt, you guys. So it's pretty exciting stuff, right? So... What else? They were, number two, they were rejected the first time. They were rejected. They had miraculous births, and they were rejected. Joseph, they plotted against him to put him to death. Genesis 37 tells us the, his, his brothers, they saw him drawing near to them, and they, wanted, they conspired to murder him. They did the same to Jesus. And on the second visit, this is in Acts 7, this is Stephen talking right before he was martyred. He said, on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He was showing that Joseph was a type and a picture of Jesus. So then let's go to Moses. So Moses, uh, remember the, he went to and, and tried to help out the Israelites there that were fighting and the, and the taskmasters that were beating him. And Moses killed one of them. And then he comes back later and one of them says, who made you ruler and judge over us? So they rejected him and he fled away, right? They rejected him and he turned, um, and turned back to, uh, Egypt in their hearts. That's what, uh, Stephen said as well, it says they rejected Moses and they turned back to Egypt in their hearts. And that speaks of what the children of Israel were doing. And someday, but they will come back. Someday they will be saved, you guys. And they will go into the promised land. And who led them into the promised land, by the way? Not Moses. He wasn't, God didn't let him do that. And Moses represents the law, right? It was Yeshua, Joshua. That's just Hebrew for Joshua. He led them in. That's the same name as Jesus. It's amazing, you guys. It's all in there. This is so exciting. Hey, by the way, you might want to subscribe. We're doing this series in Jesus in the Old Testament right now, and, and you won't miss anything. And, and hit the little bell, too, and you won't miss it. Also, comment with your thoughts. I love reading the comments and answering questions if you have questions, too. So, hey, let's get back into the presentation. So here we are. We're looking at these comparisons of Joseph and Moses and Jesus. It's so exciting. So I want to go into this with you. This is really important, but Psalm 81 says this, okay? This pertains to Joseph. Watch this. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, for it is a statute for Israel. An ordinance for the God of Jacob, he established it as a testimony in Joseph. What? A testimony in Joseph? A testimony of who? Of what? Of Jesus. And by the way, that word testimony in the Old Testament always, always, always refers to God himself. Isn't that amazing? He says that in Psalm 81. Joseph was a testimony of God, of Jesus, God the Son, Jesus. So exciting, you guys. All right, let's get back into it. So this, the third thing was they all had Gentile brides. Let's look at it right now. They have Gentile brides. So Joseph, right, Pharaoh named him Zaphnath Paneh, right, when he interpreted those dreams and he's standing before the throne, right? He was raised up out of that place of the condemned, standing before the throne. Huge picture of Jesus, by the way, right there. And Pharaoh, he who sat on the throne, named him Zaphnath Paneah, which means, which means God speaks and he lives. Jesus, the word of God, right? And he lives. Oh, <laughs> wow. And he gave him Asenath, 
the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, to be his wife. She was a Gentile. So Joseph had one bride, and she was a Gentile. Now let's go to Moses. So here we are in Moses. Now it says that now in the, the priest of Midian, right? The priest of Midian, that's Jethro, the father of these seven brides, had seven daughters, right? And what did Moses do at that well? Remember, those seven brides were being harassed by the shepherds, and Moses drove them away. He protected them from those evil shepherds, and they were seven Gentile women. What does that speak of? The church. <laughs> this is so good. Watch it. You're going to see it. And he gave his daughter, then he gave his daughter uh, Zappara, right? Z- Zappora, excuse me, to Moses. So he had, there was a seven Gentile daughters that he saved, but then he marries one Gentile bride, just like Jesus has one Gentile bride. Now, we know in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, it says that the seven lampstands and the seven stars, right, are the seven churches. Whoa, there's seven Gentile churches. Okay, this is an archway called the the Archway of Titus. It's in Rome. You can see it today. And in it, you see this carving. And it's the picture of after 70 AD when they destroyed the temple and they took the menorah, the seven golden lampstand, right? Out of the temple. These are like, um, these are like the exploits of what they did the, of their war, right? And then this is the table of the showbread. And this came from the temple, you guys, the holy place, the temple. These are holy things. And this is the, the showbread. But what it shows me is that God ended up sending the church through all of Rome and all of the whole world. That's where he sent out his church. And this was actually a symbol of what God was allowing to happen. But someday this, right, the menorah is going to be back in Jerusalem, right? The bride of Christ, the church, He's gonna. we're going to be back in Jerusalem. And they already made a menorah. It's getting ready. The Temple Institute, they built this gold menorah, and it's ready for the new temple that they're going to build back in Jerusalem today. So exciting times right now. And then the table of showbread speaks of the bread, the body of Christ, right? So exciting. All right. So then the next thing, there's a time of great trouble in both stories, right? So Joseph, there was a seven years, there's seven years of famine. They will come. They will ravage the land, he said. This is a time where, you know, the famine was, it says in the scriptures, was spread all over the entire face of the earth. So this seven-year famine that Joseph uh, foreknew and talked about through the dreams because God gave that to him. It's kind of like Jesus taking the, the scroll out of the right hand of he who sat on the throne in the book of Revelation, and he was able to break it open to reveal God's plan. So what we see in that is there's a seven-year time of great trouble all over the whole face of the earth, like this famine. And what happens? Israel gets saved. (laughs) His brothers come back to him and he forgives them. And so here we go. Let's get back into it. So Moses, right? Moses, uh, he was with his Gentile bride in the Gentile land shepherding, and God surprises him and comes to him and says, I've heard the cries of my people Israel. And I'm going to send you back. And Egypt is a type and a picture of the world. And Moses being a type and a picture of Jesus. And he's with his Gentile bride. And he's shepherding the Gentile flock. And God calls him back. Right? His bride's with him. But he calls him back to go where? Back to Egypt to save who? Israel. So awesome. And the plagues in that, that when he goes back to Egypt, are the same plagues that you see in Revelation. Whoa. Wow. So Moses, uh, God says to him, their cry for help, um, I've heard their cry for help, God said, uh, because of their bondage ascended to God, the scriptures say, and Israel from the land of Egypt by great judgment. So he delivers Israel from the land of Egypt by great judgments. And who did that? Moses. God did it through Moses, right? So then, remember, this is the last thing, Israel is saved That's what happens in the book of Revelation, you guys. If you look at it carefully, the 144,000 sealed by God, these specially selected from the 12 tribes of Israel, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, named by tribe. These are Jewish people that God seals and anoints them specially and protects them in that tribulation period, that seven-year time of great trouble. And he saves them. God saves them. 
So we see that in Revelation. We see it in Joseph's story. We see it in Moses' story. Let's get into it right now. Let's let's check out that, that presentation on that. So Joseph's brothers came. Remember, this is during the time of the Great Famine. And they came and they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground in fulfillment of his dreams, right? Remember that? Those God-given dreams. Well, he wasn't a spoiled brat. He was just telling them his God-given dreams. And here they are fulfilling what he had dreamt. And then God sent me, he says, Joseph said this, God sent me ahead of you, he tells his brothers, after he reveals who he is to them, to ensure for you a remnant on the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Those are some of the most beautiful words in the book of Genesis. And here he is, a picture and a type of Jesus forgiving his brothers who wanted to kill him, conspired to murder him, and sold him down the road to the Gentiles. So then we see Moses, right? So Moses, Moshe, if you're in Israel, right? Moshe. The Lord brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt according to their multitudes. And then they sang the song of Moses after they parted, went through that parted Red Sea and their enemies were crushed behind them. What does it say? They sang, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. That is so good. So as promised, here we are, guys. As promised, we're going to go look into this, these artifacts and these, this archaeology in Saqqara, Egypt. And it shows a lot of, I believe, what is Joseph and his story. So let's look at it right now. All right, here we are. So... These are Semitic people. All of the the uh, experts agree on that. They used a yellow pigment for them, um, and this is right around Abraham and Isaac and Joseph's time when when this was made in Saqqara, Egypt. These are two Egyptian officials with this document to this oversized official with a sickle in his hand and a rod in his hand. This speaks of Jesus, you guys. I think this picture is Joseph. That's just my conjecture. I could be wrong, but I believe that that's him. And and these people all come back to them, and they're all wearing new clothing, and they're, they're shepherds, and they have their herds or goats here, and, and it's interesting, right? There's a donkey carrying uh, something here, and these guys are playing a lyre, right? I think these are the Hebrew people. I think these are Jacob's family, Joseph's family coming to be saved. And it's on the walls in Saqqara, Egypt. It's amazing. Here's where Saqqara is. It's right about here, kind of near Memphis of of Egypt, uh, near the Nile River. Israel's up here, of course. Um, Jerusalem is right up in this area up here. And so we see that on the map. Here's those grain silos, those massive, one of them, one of the massive grain silos that were all connected with these tubes that were like pipes that would flow the grain down so that they could fill sacks. And here's the one way in, one way out uh, drawing of what it was. And they actually found the steps and how this worked uh, there as well. And you can see they're carrying the sacks of grain out of that place. So here's that picture, this line of, of the Hebrew people lined up. And they're carrying a document to this oversized official. Amazing. So what's interesting is right here, you guys, check this out. Right there on the wall painting, there's an Israeli, or excuse me, a Hebrew man, and he's bound. He's bound. Is this Simeon or is this Joseph himself? Is this showing a picture of what happened to Joseph? I don't know. But it's interesting that there's one of them is bound right there. Here it is a little bit closer up of it. So, and that's a part of the whole story that they painted here on the walls of Saqqara, Egypt. Interesting stuff, right? Wow. <laughs> All right. Genesis 45 says this. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. Now, do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me ahead of you to save lives, including theirs, right? And he kissed all of his brothers and he wept on them. And afterwards, his brothers talked with him. This was a, an amazing moment of this reconciliation during the seven-year time of great trouble where they finally recognize their long-lost brother whom they thought was dead and out of their lives, out of the picture, and he's alive. Jesus 
Yeshua HaMashiach, he's alive. And someday the Israelis, their eyes are going to be open and they're going to see that it is their long lost brother and their Lord, Yeshua, who is alive. And they're going to weep with each other. And we're going to see that in this scripture right here. Watch this. Here it is. Zechariah 12. And I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of pleading. And so that they will look at me, whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him. Wow. You see, that chapter, Zechariah 12, also says that each of the 12 tribes will weep over him as a firstborn, just like each of Joseph's brothers wept with Yosef. Wow, that all fits together, you guys. It's all threaded together in the Old Testament. Yeshua, Jesus, he's the, the scarlet thread that runs through all of it. It's amazing, is it not? So good. And then we go back to Moses' story, right? The Red Sea was parting. They walked on dry land with walls of water on the both sides. And they were on the other side, and it was the 17th day three days after Passover, right? Remember, Jesus was raised from the dead three days after Passover. And what happens? What happens, my friend? After they go through, <laughs> they sang the song of Moses. Miriam, right? Mary, well, she was playing her tambourine and singing. And here it is. And Revelation, Revelation 15 says this, and they sang. Who's they? Those who were sealed by God, the 144,000 Jewish people. And they sang the song of Moses, the, the bond servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, Jesus, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. King of the nations, Jesus someday, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, will rule and reign from Jerusalem someday. And I believe that will happen after that seven-year time of trouble. And his brothers come back, Israel comes back, and they're saved. And he unites his new family, just like Joseph had his new Gentile bride, and his old family as one, one family. And they live together in the best of the land for a long, long time. And then there's a new heaven and a new earth. And Revelation describes that, you guys. This is exciting. I love this. Don't you? How, how God weaved all of this together. It was the Old Testament, the New Testament concealed in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament revealed in the New Testament. So it's so good, you guys. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button down below. You'll get all the episodes. Also, right now we're doing a, a series, you and I together, a series called Jesus in the Old Testament. How to find Jesus in all of the Old Testament, right? Or the Tanakh if you're in Israel. And you can click on this playlist right here and go back and watch all of them. I went started in Genesis 1 and we're working our way through. The next episode is going to be Joseph. And I'm so excited about that, you guys. I love you. And hey, don't forget to click that playlist.